Good morning, Discovery. Uh, For those of us down here with gravity, uh, not looking down is probably good advice, but I guess you folks don't have to worry about it. Uh, Good morning, Bill. This thing is action-packed. There's not much time to do much else besides fulfill all all of this mission. Can you you give us a brief synopsis of, of the duties you have over the next few days? Bet, and uh, I'd actually like to start out with our flight day one, and you're right, this is an extremely packed mission, probably more so than most, just with all the scientific experiments we have on board. So we had a very aggressive flight day one, in which we have a satellite called Krista Spas, but uh, essentially it's a telescope that we deployed on flight day one, which takes a certain amount of maneuvering and preparations to go ahead and, and deploy it. We use a robotic arm to hook up to it, pull it up out of the payload bay, release it, and then we fire some jets to maneuver the orbiter away from it. The, uh, that just started everything off. We've got plenty of other experiments. I, uh, this morning, recently fired up a combustion experiment. We do combustion experiments in space because up here, unlike on Earth, we don't have convection. Uh, lighter gases don't rise. So on Earth, when a lighter gas rises, it pulls oxygen into the flame, feeds the fire, and helps it travel and burn. You don't have that up here, so flames burn differently. Uh, they tend to burn themselves out more rapidly, but they also tend to burn harder because that oxygen is not there to cool the flame or take the heat away from the surface. There are also many uh, experiments you're doing and, and exercises studying the, the Earth's atmosphere and the ozone layer. How, how will that data be used, or what, what kind of data are you looking for first? Yeah, the uh, telescope, Krista Spas, that we deployed on flight day one is primarily doing that. And the, uh, it's looking back at the Earth's medium atmosphere where those gases are, such as ozone, and it's looking at the dynamics. You know, sometime, at any time on Earth, we can look up at those gases and see what the ozone layer is or where the holes tend to be in the ozone layer. But we don't really know with all that much certainty why that moves around or the dynamics of such. The uh, Spa satellite, it's covering most of the Earth. It's looking from 70 degrees north to 70 degrees south, approximately, to try to look at these dynamics on the nine days it's out there flying so we can better predict how the gas dynamics affect the Earth and when, where these holes are going to move and when they're going to form. So how are you doing up there? This is your third flight. Uh, you're the pilot of this flight. Uh, uh, is there any time to do anything else but all these experiments? Hey, I'm doing great, Richard. Uh, I've got to admit, though, uh, this is only five day three, and I've been busy enough. I've had uh, very little time to look out the window and take photos, and that's kind of a secondary mission of ours. We uh, photograph as much of the Earth as we can, which goes to meteorologists and Earth scientists and uh, just NASA in general. And I uh, haven't really had enough time to get into that yet because we've been busy. But uh, from the time the main engine's cut off up here, I've felt at home since it hasn't been all that long since I've been back here and I'm having a great time. Tell me about the, the work day, if it is indeed a day. I assume it's more than an eight-hour day uh, up, up there. How, do, how does it go? What's the schedule look like? Yeah, we have 16-hour days, and uh, we're scheduled for nine hours of sleep. Well, as soon as we get up, we have a couple hours to uh, what we call a post-sleep, but we get ready, we get up, we bathe, we wash our hair, we eat breakfast, 
and we start getting organized, the, uh, they send up message traffic that changes the timeline, the original one. It's kind of flexible, it changes somewhat. So we start looking at the message traffic and getting organized for the day. Then after a couple hours, we start into events that were scheduled, the ones you've been talking about, which actually includes PO events. Uh, probably one of these every other day is the average, is my guess on this mission. And then towards the end of the day, a couple hours before we go to sleep, or 14 hours into our day, now we have pre-sleep activities, and now we start configuring the, uh, the space shuttle for us all to go to bed, and it's the left uh, with just the ground watching after it. And again, during that time, we'll eat our dinner meal, uh, get our little sleeping bunks out, and they get ready to go to sleep. How about your personal division of labor as the, uh, the pilot on duty? Is there much uh, to do uh, when it comes to uh, monitoring the craft itself as opposed to all these experiments during the nine days? On this flight, along with the experiments, such as the Krista satellite we deployed, there is some a fair amount of piloting duties to do. A couple times a day, we are burning the big jets, the uh, reaction control system jets on board, to make sure we are phasing anywhere from 25 to 45 miles. We want to maintain that distance from spas. We also, there's a fair amount of pointing maneuvers. The instruments that I mentioned earlier that may look at Jupiter or the sun, or when we point to the Earth for uh, different laser ops, uh, on board, the, that's the pilot, the pilot or commander's job to go ahead and put in those attitudes to move, maneuver the shuttle to point it in the right direction. And they also wanted you to make aware of a sunward jet or spike on the comet, and that will cause the shape to be a little bit uh, asymmetric. Okay, that matches what's my plan to uh, call down each OBS number. number. Uh, I'll be looking for that on the comet. I was able to see the comet uh, uh, a couple of hours ago visually. It was a very, very faint uh, target by eye, and uh, was not able to get the binoculars on it in time, but at least we did sight the comet. Uh, the setup has gone very smoothly, and uh, we'll be putting the telescope on the window in just a couple of minutes here. There's a lot of earth shine uh, that's even though the shadowing seems to be effective and does, uh, uh, Jan has done a really good job putting the shadow right over the window. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of earth shine. We'll just have to see how that uh, works. Discovery Houston for the VTR playback. 